this is Joe Neville back with another Python video. So this is part two of two looking at virtual environments. In the first video I looked at virtual environments on Windows 10 and in this video we're going to look at Linux, specifically Ubuntu and MacOS. Now both of these operating systems come with Python installed, so a global installation. But when you're learning Python there's probably going to be a certain amount of trial and error um, creating new projects, trying new things out and installing packages. And it's a good idea that you're not installing these packages um, always onto the global installation. Or you can find, as what's happened to me in the past, that you actually cause some problems with the running of the OS by being a bit too enthusiastic about removing Python packages. Um, and, and so it's a good idea to use the isolation and not touch that global install. It can save you in the long run having to rebuild your OS. Um, so let's dive straight into it then. First of all, we're going to look at Ubuntu Linux. I, over on the left here, I have, this is Ubuntu 19.04, so that's the latest version at the time of recording. Here's the desktop, but it'll be easier if I just SSH into that. So I'll close that down. We'll open up my terminal, here we are, and it's, I'll SSH in. Okay, so now we're on the command line of my Ubuntu box. If I'd show you the history, I've done uh, update and an upgrade and installed SSH. This is a pretty clean install of the OS. Oh, and I should mention that I did a minimal install rather than the full installation, but that shouldn't really affect us for our purposes here. Now with Ubuntu, if we type in Python, unlike Windows, um, it doesn't find the command as it's saying there. Now it does have Python installed, and it's Python 3, it's 3.7.3, .3, which is the latest um, version, but that's the global. So let's go out of here. The difference being that you have to enter Python 3, whereas with Windows, you don't need to do that. You just type Python because there's no other version. Okay, no, and so if you wanted it, it's telling you what you need to do there. If you wanted for some reason to install a, a version um, 2.7, then you would type, do a sudo apt install Python like this, okay. Now the other thing with this is that it doesn't hold your hand so much as the uh, Windows installation which includes um, pip and the virtual environment for you during the during the install process. So you actually have to include those. Now I've got some notes, I'll bring those over here, cover me up, that's fine. Um, and let's make this a bit bigger. Over here is what we need to do. So we need to install actually pip, so a pretty basic um, tool that we're going to need for installing our packages, but we do need to install it. So it's uh, sudo apt install python3 pip and python3 venv for virtual environment. Take note about that Python 3 as well, otherwise you'll be installing pip for Python 2. I've jumped ahead and that has now installed. And we have pip and virtual environment installed. We can manually create virtual environments and install our packages now. Let's make a directory, we we'll call it code. Go into code, this is normally how I set up my OS. And here we'll go Python 3-M virtual environment, we'll call it test1. Do an ls, there's test1. Now to activate this, we go source test1 and it is bin activate. And there we are. If we go Python, so we're in Python 3.7.3, .3, but it's not the global install, remember, it's the inside the virtual environment. If we want to do a Python, so we can do pip install, let's go requests. That will install requests for us. Go into Python again, import requests. 
There we are. No error messages. Okay. So to close down that virtual environment, we do a deactivate. Excellent. Now, if we want to take our virtual environment management a step further and make it a bit easier for ourselves, let's install virtual environment wrapper to do that. Now, notice here we won't in the global, we won't have pip because pip will point to Python 2 rather than Python 3. So when you're in your virtual environments, you can install using just straight pip. But out on the global here, we don't have Python 2 installed here. We need to designate pip 3, I've found. So what we do, pip 3 install. So it's virtual env wrapper. Okay, so that's installed now, but it gives you some error, well, not error messages, it gives you some warnings down here to say that the scripts have been installed in a directory which is not on the path, which means we're going to have to rectify that. But there's also some other steps that we need to take. Now, if you jump over to the, it's virtual environment wrapper dot read the docs dot IO, it gives you the installation steps and it's a bit more involved than Windows. Um, so what you have to do, it tells you down here for the difference, a so basic installation, right? We've already done that. And then what we have to do here is we have to edit our shell startup file. So I know this isn't the kind of thing that many beginners would want to be playing around with and if they don't have much experience with uh, Linux, but uh, it is useful if you want to get this wrapper up and running. So what we need to do is we need to go on Ubuntu, we will go to our bash profile and we will add in these statements. I've, I'll put the uh, detail, I found this is what we need, it, what we need to add and I will put these details into the description. And as you can see with MacOS, it's slightly different. So we need to add the path. It's already told us that we create a home for the virtual environment, a home for the project. And we have to point the virtual environment wrapper Python to the version of Python that we're using, the 3.7. And then finally, and this is an important point, after all those export statements, you have to activate the shell script. So we use this line source and then it's the installation path of the virtual environment wrapper.sh. And it says in the notes, Python interpreter, virtual environment and path, it tells you you have to set the variables, must be set before sourcing the wrapper script here. So we need to put in our exports before the source. Back on Ubuntu then, we need to do a sudo, I'll do a nano of the bash startup file. So dot bash rc, okay, here, here we are. Um, so I need to put these export statements in. I'll just copy these details across then. Let's exit out of there, save that, good. And what you have to do then, you can either reload the OS or you can just reload that file by doing a source bash RC. Okay, and this shows us that it's correct. If you did that and you had got something wrong, like when your path was wrong or something, you would get a warning here that would give you an indication of what was wrong. But this looks good now. So what that means is that I'll clear that off. We can make virtual environments for ourselves. So if we go make virtual env, I will call this one test five. Test five and it's activated. So if I go Python, um, actually I'll do a, so a pip install, uh, let's go key ring, good, and then we can go into Python there and we'll do an import key ring, excellent, can deactivate that 
and we'll make let's make uh, test uh, six make another one and we do a work on to see the one the virtual environments that we've created via this script via the wrapper and we also use that to jump between them so there's five there's six let's deactivate that okay so that is Ubuntu Linux 1904 looking at virtual environments and using the virtual environment wrapper to help you manage those environments. Here I am on macOS. So this is my main OS, so it's not a completely clean install like I had with the other OSs in these videos, but that shouldn't put us off. Um, let's move into, I've created a folder, right, virtual test. Now to create virtual environments manually, we go Python 3 dash M and it's V-E-N-V -E for virtual environment. We'll call it test one. Off it goes and we have to activate this. So it's like Linux, we go source test one bin activate. Now I'm in there. If I do a pip install key ring as I have done, off it goes. Okay, Python import key ring. Good stuff. And still in test one, we go deactivate. There we are. So now I'm back out. Um, now the install for virtual environment, you can do that with pip. So it's pip three install virtual environment wrapper. Now that's installed. And again, like Linux, what we have to do is we have to edit our shell file. So ex exporting the work on home, the project home, the virtual environment wrapper, Python interpreter, and the where virtual environment sits. So that's different from Linux, but I found this works. This is what I found is working on my Mac. So it's slightly different. Um, and the install path for the shell script, so the virtual environment wrapper is different from Linux. And I'm using bash as my shell, so I need to edit the dot bash underscore profile. Here we are then. What I will do, I'll just copy this across. Let's grab this. Paste that in. Exit and save. And then just like with Linux, we need to source that file. It's bash underscore profile. Okay, good, no errors. Then make virtual env new one. Okay, that's activated. Uh, deactivate. It's exactly the same as with Linux in this regard. We can do a work on and see our virtual environments. Just like the others, we can move between them. That's it for virtual environments then. You're probably thinking this is pretty difficult um, and it is pretty tricky, I'll, I'll give you that. But managing Python environments is notoriously difficult and soon gets out of hand, especially um, with beginners. So I do think it's worth your while to learn, to learn about virtual environments as I've explained. There are other tools that you can use like Pipev to which hold your hand here as well. But I think it's worth taking the time to learn how to create the environments manually. That will put you in good stead in the long run, especially because when you're looking at using an editor like PyCharm or Visual Studio Code, you really need to know a little bit at least about virtual environments to understand how they handle that so that suddenly you're not looking at a project and wondering where all your packages have gone. 
I'll put that text file in the description of the video then so hopefully that will help you out if you are trying to recreate this yourself. But that's all for this video. Please give me a like or a dislike, leave a comment, etc. You know what to do. And that just leaves me to say thanks for watching. My name is Joe Neville and goodbye.